Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. In this episode of Wisdom Entrepreneurs, we talked about how miracles show up in our everyday lives. I loved this conversation and a personal favourite of mine is when Krista Campbell started talking about how she started with just a thought of writing some guides for people and now they're translated into many languages around the world. Each of the chapters are listed in the description below or you can click along the bottom. And if you'd like us to talk about anything in particular, we would really, really love your comments below. If you'd like to sign up for the next Wisdom Entrepreneurs, the link for that is also below in the description. We hope to see you at a live event soon. Lots of love, everybody. Bye. So take a moment, everybody, to uh, ground ourselves and bring ourselves to this special moment, this gift that we're giving ourselves. It's time out, time to reflect. If it's comfortable for you, put your feet on the ground and your hands in your lap and lower your gaze or close your eyes. I'm going to read a little piece called Neutrality by Jane Tucker. Every moment of each day is an opportunity. If we hold on to attachments about how life ought to unfold, we set ourselves up for disappointment. When something beautiful happens, that moment in itself is the reason to rejoice. While we reflect on those words, let the day so far go. Let's leave our thoughts at the door. And bask in this connection of souls. And when you're ready to bring yourself back into the room, It occurred to me to talk about miracles when I wrote up the the blurb for this, this show. Because I was seeing that there's so many miracles every day. Like even waking up, I heard someone say once, like every every day that we wake up, we should say, wow, we're alive. And we don't do that, do we? Like I, if anybody's like me, sometimes I drag myself out of bed and I drag myself to what I'm doing next and I drag myself through the day. And it really occurred to me that every time we wake up is a celebration of, of a miracle that we're awake, we're alive. We can be present in this day. I was in uh, Foston Hall today, which is a women's prison in the UK. And we're starting there on the 5th of July. So today we just went in to do radio training, but we'd met someone in our rounds and we promised her that we would come back to see her because she's going to be released before we start our group so we left uh we left one of our distance learning packs and and we said we'd come back and see her and see how she's getting on any anyway in true prison fashion she didn't get the pack until today so she hadn't started working through it yet but she was so grateful for us turning up and i don't know we spent about half an hour with her maximum And she just, she was just so sweet. She's clearly somebody who's been through a lot of trauma. She's going to go into rehab when she leaves prison. She left prison previously and was back in within 10 days. 
And so this time they've agreed to let her go to rehab. It's what she really wants and she's fought a corner for it. And when she was flicking through the, the distance learning books, um, she, she was struggling to read, but it didn't make any difference. You know, she just, she read what she could. And I felt so moved by her, her resilience and her light. Her light was so bright. Her light lit us. And Dave's going to work with her. We, we're going to implement, um, we have a system where we can work remotely through uh, something called email a prisoner. And Dave's going to work with her remotely through this system. And even for that, she was just really grateful. And Dave said, well, you know, I'm going to learn from you as well. And she wanted to know what he meant by that. And um, there's, a, there's a poem by Rumi in the distance learning book. And she was flicking through the book and she said, uh, what, what does this mean? The question was, what do you think Rumi is pointing to? And she was reading the poem and she said, I can't see that he's pointing. So I, I said, oh, I, I, think, I think we meant by that question, like, what do, you, what do you feel inside when you read that poem? She went, oh, right, well, that makes more sense. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, it's so easy to get complicated and say things that becomes common parlance to us and and actually there's an easier way or a simpler way to talk about it. So I said, oh, well, re read us um, a couple of lines and then tell me what you think he's saying. And, and she read really slowly and she, she read, oh, she read the lines and she got a few words wrong, but she still carried on. And I thought about how tongue-tied I get sometimes when I read and I trip over a word or I don't know what that word is and I, I get a little bit insecure and tongue-tied and she just she just read the best she could and she was just very straightforward with it and I felt like there's a miracle right there this lady that's been through a lot had a lot of trauma in her life has used alcohol and drugs to to um, medicate herself and here she is in prison reading to us and teaching us about getting more simple i just loved that i thought there is a miracle right there We have a little vegetable, uh, we planted a tiny little vegetable plot outside, which I think we'll probably get about five vegetables, you know, it's like that small. <laughs> and, and Rob found a potato uh, that he'd planted in just in a trough and we, when we put it in and this potato's growing to a tree. It, it's just huge, this one potato and there's this tree growing out of it. And every day I look at it and think, it's the same thing. It's it's a miracle. When you think of when you think of how the world is balanced and how everything has to work together for us to be alive and all of that, you know, science, which which I, I you know I don't know how it all works and I can't say it all, but it's a miracle. And to me, that that Jane Tucker saying when something beautiful happens that moment in itself is a reason to rejoice 
just reminds me to celebrate each beautiful thing, to rejoice in each beautiful thing. You know how, how I can get very excited. Oh, this has happened and that's going to mean this or. Um, what next? You know, oh, great. You know, we've won an award. Oh, great. What does that mean? Instead of just rejoicing in the moment of beauty, in the moment of the sunset, in the moment of the rain, what the rain brings. So that's where I was with my reflections on miracles. Yeah, I love that, Mum Jay. I was just thinking um, outside our unit, we've got a unit out in the sticks, you know, like on a farm. And um, right outside our drive, outside our driveway, sorry, we've been doing a lot of work, some concrete and stuff. Now it's just mud. But it's like its own little ecosystem now because the plants and stuff that are coming out is absolutely amazing. But I've never noticed it before. You know, I've never, never taken notice of anything like that. So every day is a miracle, you know, just seeing stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. That reminds me of the, when the plant grows out the side of the wall or, you know, or a mountain and there's a little plant that grows outside of it. And, it, and it's used to know a lot in, you know, different things. But it is truly like life just keeps finding a way, doesn't it? It finds a way. It finds any way it can to thrive. And to think that we're full of that same source and essence is just amazing. On the, on the drive back from the prison, um, poor Dave. <laughs> <laughs> poor Dave asked me uh, about my mum he said oh you never mentioned your mum <laughs> so he got he got the full story you know this full story of of um stuff just because he said that you know I said oh um, I thought oh well we're driving you know might as well entertain entertain him and I told him all these stories and he kept going, wow, wow, I didn't know that, wow, <laughs> I didn't know that. Well, that explains a lot, he said at one point, which, you know, maybe I should pick him up on that, what does he mean? <laughs> but I thought, wow, I feel like I really am a miracle. I'm that resilient person that I saw sitting in front of me today. I'm, I'm seeing her reflecting me and me reflecting her and I never really knew that before you know I saw it in everybody else I never really knew it was in me too and it seems to me that that's the moment when you see that you're part of it as well that's the moment when you can really share, when you can really offer. Because you know it's true. If you see yourself as part of that miracle, you know then that, it, that, it, that it's everyone. I was just thinking, um, I had a conversation uh, in class today with some of my kids and uh, I had a lesson planned for them. And I don't think they were too keen on doing what I had planned. And sometimes, sometimes one of the kids will ask a question because they think maybe listening to the answer will be more exciting than, than what the work I'm asking them to do. And um, so today I just went with it because the question that they'd asked me was just something about my life. They wanted to know more about me. And uh, I just, very spontaneously started talking about my life and um because I, I kind of know these kids they know me you know I've been teaching them for a year and at the end of it one of them said you should write a book sir so but it was quite miraculous it was one of those spontaneous things that were probably far more educational for that for that class than the the kind of work that they were meant to be doing in that lesson 
And I really didn't think anything of it until I just listened to what, what you guys were saying. But that was a mini miracle, really. Yeah. And sometimes I think you just have to allow them to happen. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. And the, and the learning that goes, the connection that they feel from that, it, there's so much learning in there that you yeah. or them won't even know. Yeah. And, it came, and the question came from genuine curiosity. You know, partly it's like, oh, yeah, let's, you know, we, we can sort of distract our teacher. But actually, they did want to know the answer. And then they kept asking more and more questions. So obviously, they, you know, once they heard the story, they were like, oh, actually, this is kind of interesting. So, yeah, nice. that was the day. Nice. So in school, um, just today, um, there's a boy I'd been supporting for a while who was a total school refuser because of his anxiety. And today... And I went out and to meet him because we got down. He, he attends all the time. He just, the final bit was that, you know, I meet him at reception and I said to him, you don't need me to do this anymore. And he said, and he just agreed. And so that was my little miracle there. He doesn't wow. need, that was nice. And um, another one was, uh, so because of COVID, we've got um, some students that um, aren't attending because of anxiety, but personally I believe their anxiety came before Covid and that's what I'm seeing but there's one girl I've only met up with her twice shortly and um, I wasn't getting a great feeling but you know I thought let's let's not judge it and last week I met with her for about 20 minutes and um, I was listening to her and then um, she was doing some art and I, I, I was just thinking you know I'm getting the feeling she doesn't want me here too long. That's fine. And so I um, I left her Mavis Khan's poem, The Secret. And I said, look, this, this might interest you. Oh, no, I know what I did. I, I put it down. I said, look, have a read of that. I said, I'm just going to make myself a cup of tea. And then I came back and um, I said, you know, did you like She said, it was OK. And I left it. And uh, I hadn't seen her. I miss, last week, I kept missing her. And I caught up with her today. And um, lots of lessons she couldn't get into, and she's been attending nearly all of them. And uh, she said, Miss, I feel so proud of myself. It was really, really nice. Wow. That was lovely, yeah. Yeah. And I got praise from some senior staff, which was nice. So, yeah. It's little miracles you, you're not even aware of sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, today I had a feed uh, exchange with um, someone from the email of Prisoner. And um, it was just such a beautiful, beautiful letter that I got back. And it uh, really touched me, really moved me, you know. And I just thought, it's so amazing that, you know, you can have that kind of heart connection soul to soul connection just you know you don't need to know the details of people or things like that and it's just yeah it was just really really nice and also I'm still sleeping outside my following my wisdom from before and it's just amazing waking up every morning and each day like at the weekend I woke up and the first thing I saw was this robin feeding its chick just outside the tent and or the daisies are pointing in a different direction depending on the weather or something and it's just so such a gift to have that moment of noticing each morning just simple things that are going on in nature and yeah wow <laughs> that's a while now isn't it how long is that 10 days why did you do it pete i was just about to say i did it for one night but that was enough for me because my back was killing <laughs> <laughs> i don't do tents i'm afraid i felt that there was a miracle today when i was talking to a student who i'd spoken to last week and 
she is somebody who has a lot of trauma in her history and she's she dwells on it a lot um and she was talking about well sometimes she's said she's in her third year of university and so she's got another full year ahead of this one but she said that she feels she needs to get psychological services set up so that by the time she leaves university she's not going to because she feels university is in some ways a place of comfort and support but how am I going to be equipped to survive in the world beyond university and it, it's kind of struck me that gosh it's as though she doesn't anticipate that she will experience any change in that time or you know feel a greater sense of freedom she's anticipating that she she's got to get this stuff sorted out for that that point over a year down the line but anyway um she was feeling really discouraged and as if there was no hope when i spoke to her last week and she felt she could never escape her story and i found myself trying to put into words that that there's an intelligence behind life we're connected to a source there's something that's beyond our story and I, I wasn't sure how to articulate it or how she would hear it but she said I needed to hear that today and it felt as though at the end of the session there was just a bit more of a sense of hope around for her um, and then when I met her, well, actually, and then there's somebody else who's sort of in her department sent me a little update. They, they'd spoken to her on Friday. And in many ways, they gave me a, a paragraph that was sort of all the difficulty she was experiencing, as I'd heard last Monday. And I thought, gosh, it's so, you know, she's so living in that story. Uh, but when I saw her today, it's interesting because she said to me, how are you? And I talked to her about something nice I'd done at the weekend. Actually, yeah, yeah, yesterday I'd, I'd swum in the sea. Uh, and then she had talked about her Father's Day and how she and her sister had made a picture for her father and how they'd created a rap song for her dad. And it, it, before I came to the session, I was thinking it would be great if we could have what, what came in my mind as problem-free talk, some problem-free talk, because she does seem to get so immersed in, in her story that's painful. But I didn't even need to make that happen. It was like that we both just set off like that and we were talking about things that felt good for about 20 minutes. And then, and then I said, do you know what? I said, it's interesting, I was gonna talk about this idea of problem-free talk uh, today and, 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 and what that is, is kind of just attending to um, things that, that feel good. And, and we said, isn't that funny? That's what we've done. And then she said, I think we could just have a short session today. Um, and she said, cause I think if I keep talking then I'll end up bringing in the other stuff. Um, and I said, I think that's great. <laughs> uh, and, uh, it, it, and I felt as though I was able to also pick out a couple of times where she, she was noticing her health. It felt she was, she was getting herself outside more. And so it actually, it didn't feel as though we were denying this other experience that she lives in a lot of the time, but that we were having a different experience and also picking up on the bits of her well-being that are coming through. And we both just agreed, well, let's just away off in the sunshine now, bye. <laughs> um, and, and interestingly though, before she went, she said, she said, yes, it is good to talk like this. She said, it's good not to always get into the other stuff that's underneath. And, and I don't know how other people would feel about this, but I said, maybe, you know, maybe you don't need to see it as that the other stuff's underneath. I said, maybe it's where you put your attention. Um, and, you know, that, that, that this is where you're putting your attention now and, and how's it feeling? Um, and, and then she, we, 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 said goodbye and she was going to skip off and see a friend and it just felt like something really different so that that felt like a miracle definitely mm. yeah beautiful mm. i love i love what you're pointing to there to use that pointing to word um that you know I, i've been seeing in the um in the packs that we've been getting back from the the guys and the girls 
little little glimpses of sunshine little glimpses of health and knowing like like it really surprised me that a book you know just a just a, a pack of material I thought well what they're going to get from that really and th and there they are they're writing the answers and there are these little glimpses of 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 wisdom poking through that's, that sounded like that's what you were seeing there little little glimpses of of wisdom and I don't think there's a right or wrong way I think that uh, highlighting that they can have that experience highlighting that that's there for them you know she can clearly navigate to that and um when we highlight it they get to see oh yeah like that was me I I did that you know I taught I had a problem for each chat with you and the way you talked about Skippy she skipped off to be with her friend beautiful it really felt as if her wisdom was because it was her idea to end the session and it wasn't, yes. it wasn't a nice one it just sort of felt like and, and she knew that she yes. might go to this other place. And that just felt completely like wisdom. Yes, totally. Yes. Beautiful. I, um, I've just gone back to doing some work for cancer support charity. And I had an awful lot of thinking about it, like, you know, about actually going back. And um, it's a different role. And they want me to do some fundraising and networking community relationship building and that kind of thing and um and I, had, I just had so much thinking about it anyway but I did it I did it anyway and um I rang up a, a client of the charity and she invited me to visit her and husband and um she said we, we might you know we might be able to help because the charity's helped us so much and um I mean, this really is a massive miracle in my mind. I'm like blown away by it. But I went to visit them and they they own this manor, um, Keythorpe Manor. And we had this wonderful meeting and basically they they offered offered me the use of the manor for the next health and wellness show. And I'd, I'd been telling myself about going back to the charity. I know they're going to want me to organise another health and wellness show. And we've done three and they about left us all for dead, the team, because we did everything. And it was like sort of manic, but it was like amazing. But we didn't make any money from doing it. And it, we were all so exhausted afterwards. So in my head, I thought, oh, crikey, I don't know if I can, can go through all that again. And then, and then this, this manner um, that's going to be no cost to the charity at all has just sort of presented itself to me. So we're already in, in profit, if you know what I mean, before normally we have to get all these stall holders and everything else just to pay for the venue. Um, so we're already in profit and it's just it's just come really easily. And I've just felt really emotional about it because Mina, who's the um, lady, uh, cancer's come back and um, she, well, she basically just said, you guys have helped me so much and we're lucky for what we've got and we want to give back. And, um, and I was, I was there in my mind thinking, well, we didn't do that much, <laughs> but, and then a son, a son joined us and he said, what you've done for my mom and the, our family has changed everything. Wow. So even though she's, she's a cancer's come back, she's still, she's still changed. And, I can see her well-being with cancer mm. as opposed to how she was and how stressed she was at the beginning. Mm. So, so it, the, the generosity is just blew me away, to be honest. Amazing. Mm. It's a massive miracle. <laughs> yeah, massive. It is massive. Uh, yeah. But it's it's equally the little you know the tiny ones all of it all of it is a miracle. It's a miracle yeah. even that I've I've gone back there and 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 gone there and they remembered me from a workshop from you know two and a half years ago and stuff. It's all all of it is, it, yeah. It's just it's just amazing. It really is. It's um. 
I really felt this this was a miracle and it's a different you know it's like something else um I was going to say it's not as big as that but it was to me um I I've been running since last August and love I love it I I've never run in my whole life <laughs> and now I'm running and I love it I just feel so joyful and love getting out there and absolutely love it and I'm training for a race and I I injured myself a couple of weeks ago and and I couldn't run anymore um and I wanted to run anyway and you know I had all that going on and it it's a miracle to get an appointment with a doctor <laughs> that's for sure anyway it took me two weeks to get get an appointment we have to phone on the same day and all of that and then the doc eventually the doctor I wanted just wasn't available again so I was like I'll, I'll go with any doctor and so I got this doctor's appointment on Thursday and first of all he saw me as a runner like he kept saying well as you're a runner um, and inside I was giggling because I was thinking he thinks I'm a runner that's so cute um, and you know he, he basically was saying oh I'm sure it can all be sorted out and and so on so I came out all high thinking oh, I'll see it I'm gonna go for a 6k run tomorrow and and everything anyway during the session he said but you know you need to see a physio and he's only in on Mondays and Fridays and he's got one available slot tomorrow. I was like, wow, <laughs> isn't that amazing? So I went to see the physio and in between the doctor and the physio and, and some of the point during the, the two weeks or the 10 days, I kept, I, I kept having this roller coaster sort of um, experience of well, does the joy come from within me or does it come from the running? You know, like, can I find the joy in other supports or et cetera? And I kept having this roller coaster experience of not really being motivated to do anything else and knowing that the joy can't be coming from the outside thing, but, but somehow not quite seeing it within and, and all of that. Anyway, the physio was less enthusiastic and, and he basically said, oh, I don't know about a 10K race. Um, however, you know, there, there are some things that you can do. And so I, I'm, I'm, I'm now on this mission to prove him wrong and to run a 10K race in four weeks time. But the miracle of, of the appointment being available and being able to get in, it felt like so quickly then. But also that nine years ago, I was told that I had to have knee replacements imminently and I was getting married uh, the following year and I said can I wait till I get married because I didn't want to hobble up up the aisle sort of thing you know and um, anyway he said oh it's touch and go I, I don't know and now nine years later they wouldn't even give me any operation because I don't qualify so they used to give them away like candy and, and now, now you're not allowed to have them and I thought isn't that weird in a way because it feels like to me like new knees would be amazing. Like I think of these AI type knees that that will just run on their own and I'll, you know, I'll just do my emails while they're running sort of thing, <laughs> making these phone calls. <laughs> but of course it won't be like that, will it? You know, like ha having new knees is, is problematic. And I thought how amazing I got to keep my knees. And I, I feel emotional now talking about it, but... I felt real love for them. Like, well done, knees, you know, you kept going and, and I've taken some care of them, but not as much as I could. And it made me want to really look after them and make them strong and get the rest of the muscles around them strong to, to sort of, to um, honor them. For the hard work that they've put in over the last nine years and and they've got to keep me going now because they won't give me any any new AI needs <laughs> so oh, it is those daily miracles sorry Pete I was just gonna say that just uh, reminded me your injury last week 
as horrible as this is going to sound, was a miracle for me. Because you've done a video of you on that exercise bike, and I thought, why don't I just go and get an exercise bike? Because I've got bad knees. So I've ordered an exercise bike. So for me, that was a miracle. Yes. So at least I can get some exercise. Yes, I saw that. <laughs> I never and thought, I, yeah, I never thought I, about it myself. I thought that. When, when I put that out there, I thought that's amazing because – you might not think of it yourself and then you see that and you go, oh, yeah, that's what I can do. Yeah. Are you still waiting for that to come? Yeah, I think it's five days of waiting. I had a, had a, a situation as well where we, we won an award and um, there, was a, there was a news piece, you know, so we put the news piece out everywhere. And then a friend of mine who's been my friend for 40 years, we started... Uh, we met when we were 16 and we were door knocking for loft insulation to get leads for loft insulation. And she saw the post and she rang me up and said, um, oh, you know, I work at this place uh, in a contract management, NHS. There are these things going on. I didn't know that you did work in the community. I thought you just worked in prison. Get in touch with these people. <laughs> I was like, wow. How does that even work? And look at those miracles in prison all the time where you touch people's lives and you change them. And, and look at Omer and Derek. There's two miracles walking around. Yeah. Yeah. And Chris and Dan and... And all the, all the miracles to come. Yes. So lovely to hear all these um, stories, these anecdotes. Beautiful. Um, I, I, too, was very pleased to see, Jacqueline, um, the, the five or so companies that were, um, you know, put up for the award, whatever it was called, something, Make a Mark. And uh, delighted to see that um, you were celebrated with what you do, such meaningful work. Um, I, I'd, I'd want to add the word um, mystery to, to, um, to miracles. Um, for example, um, like three years ago, we did a peer counseling course and used the My Guide Inside materials based on the three principles. And we did an official um focus group it's actually our only official <laughs> evaluation everything else has to be considered informal because i was involved but um so we did this official focus group which was 30 minutes and it's and we've made a, a short five minute video from that and people just love hearing what the teenagers have learned and the confidence and the beauty with which they speak and so um just recently, Kathy was like, wow, it's been three years. It would be great to have um, a follow-up. And um, that same day or the next day, <laughs> anyway, within like 24 hours, we get this email from one of the um, high school students who's now just finishing third year university. And she's like, I really want to help. Is there anything I can do? <laughs> And um, so here we are on again, and that's the mystery and the beauty of how these connections happen. And so she's gone about finding everyone's emails. And so um, next week we'll do a, a, an official uh, follow-up focus group to see where these young people are at. And I'm, I've had some emails from a few of them. And as we know, it just, uh, once you find, as you were saying, once you see it in yourself, it's your own gift that you can share with the world and you never lose it. So um, that's really going to be fun too. And I have to kind of hide in the background because otherwise it wouldn't be official. But anyway, it's going to be really fun. And then afterwards, we'll have a little informal party just to um, not record it, but just to hear where everybody's at. But also one more, if I may, I just got... Um, machine translations of teacher reflections in Brazil, who've just done three principles um, training, and then they're going to be using the My Guide Inside materials, which have been translated into Portuguese. 
And I read these reflections. I have like four pages of reflections from the, not just the teachers, but every person on staff was involved. And you go, wow, there it is again. It's just the, the uh, virtually the identical comments that we receive from teachers here in Canada and that I've read, um, you know, from teachers in um, the US and UK and Australia and uh, all the other wonderful countries. So, um, I just think it's a miracle that um, the simplicity of the three principles is so universal. And we may have, like we were saying earlier, different words or, or different ways or whatever, but we all recognize the simplicity of the truth. So great wow. job. Don't you think that's amazing though, that, you know, like those, those days when you sat in, in Sid's house and, and you were, you were just, listening to Sid and talking to Sid and then here you are with your work translated into all these languages yeah. <laughs> that is the mystery isn't it it that, is yeah it is. and how people are attracted you know obviously um uh you you want to be open and you stay connected but really I love the miracle of how people find you yes. and you know, with their goodwill like I'm hearing about a lot of goodwill on um from everyone and and that's um the story here as well is that the goodwill is attracted to good work and there you have um the winning combination wow it's beautiful I'm glad you mentioned about the mystery as well Krista um because sometimes it, you reminded me or it came to mind about it, this this lad that when we used to work in the prison all the time and, and we'd be walking around and it was very commonplace to have people say, oh, wow, you've changed my life. Um, you've saved my life and, and so on. And I noticed at one point that we sort of just took it for granted, you know, like we got so used to hearing it all the time. We, we, it was just something that it was like saying hello, you know, we, we heard it all the time. And, and this one boy came running up and, and he, you know, and I said, how are you? And how he ended up being on the course was that, <laughs> so, you know, I, I rarely, rarely, rarely turn people away, but this, this one person came and they were so intoxicated they couldn't even stand up, you know, to get into the room. So I said, no, we really, really can't keep him. And so I'll take him back. And I took him back to his wing and it was all locked down, you know, like at that point, then you can't, you can't move. And as I took him onto the wing, this very, very quiet man, um, you know, said, well, you know, what do you do, miss? And of course you always stop and, and, and talk. And I stopped and explained and, he said, oh, I really need that. And he was really quiet and really shy. And I said to the officer, can I take him instead? You know, and, and, and the officer was kind and the officer said, yes, take him. So I said, come on, come on, let's, let's go quick. And off we went and we went to group and he sat through group very, very quietly and came to the next group and he sat through that group very, very quietly. And, you know, about six months later, we're walking on the wing and we bump into him. And... I said, oh, how are you? And he said, oh, amazing. You know, you changed my life. And, and I said, well, what, what's happening? He said, I'm not drinking. I'm getting my education. I'm really looking forward to being released. I know what I'm going to do with my life. I found my faith. And he, he, just, he just tumbled off this whole list of, you know, really positive things. And it was, a, to me, the whole miracle of him being on the group anyway, because he wasn't even meant to be there and we're not meant to have people that aren't on the list, etc. But then the mystery of how that will turn out, that we don't have the, you know, we don't have the say on that, how that will turn out, and then just acknowledging that in the moment. And, and he reminded me, it, I always think of him as just stuff and be grateful for, for what the feedback for what you're hearing for those those beautiful moments because that's you know it, it's what Jane's pointing to here isn't it when something beautiful happens that moment in itself is the reason to rejoice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
I love that, Mama, because every day I wake up and think it's a miracle that I'm, I'm here. You know, most people know my story, trying to commit suicide in 2019. And then obviously the work you guys have done with me. And now I'm actually out there helping others. And every day is a miracle. And yeah, I'm just really grateful for that. So thanks. <laughs> uh, you know what I think is a miracle? That you didn't all disappear when the lads aren't here. <laughs> I'm also relieved. <laughs> I was I was speaking at the three principles conference one year and it was when the Manchester um, when the Adriana Grande was bombed in Manchester and I was waiting to go on the stage and and Aaron had said Aaron Turner had said you know sort of said that um, talked about it the bombing and how we can how we can get over that and and so on so he he's had that moment and then he said anyway so you know now and then he introduced me <laughs> and literally half the audience stood up and walked out and uh, including most of the front row which is reserved for the you know the free the free principles elders um so linda pransky all of that all stood up and walked out um, and he looked at me like, you know, what have I said? What's what, what's going on here? And of course, um, even though I got over my debilitating fear of public speaking, I was still a little bit <laughs> nervous, quite nervous. And so I, I, I went up there and made some lame joke about, you know, I hope everybody else is here because they want to be here and not because they felt sorry for me. Anyway, I got into it and did my talk and, and whatever. Um, but but all the way through, I thought, you know, wow, like they really must dislike me. <laughs> they all walked out. Anyway, it turned out uh, I was presenting in the main um, arena and next door was Elsie Spittle. So no wonder. <laughs> and when he announced, because they all assumed she would be in the main arena. So when he announced me, they all realised, oh, they were in the wrong place. So it wasn't anything to do with me. I, I don't mind being gazumped by Elsie Spittle. So um, I come from 25 years of addiction, drinking drugs, basically. And um, I thought the only way I could really help, you know, the wider audience is to put on my own show, which I'm hopefully doing with Jason Shires as well. Um, but we're, it's going to be called... Um, dissecting addiction so basically we're just going to delve deep into addiction once a week and um just see what see what comes out of it so we can find in the hope that we can reach others and and pete uh was very very shy at speaking in groups um well, still, yeah still am. yeah but you're doing it that's really good really really good amazing just following the threads taking the step the steps very cool yes i think for pete that's going to grow into something so beautiful that dissecting addiction you know um addictions are in lots of things aren't they not just drugs and alcohol yeah so, for sure yeah yeah, yeah so uh, uh, it's going to be fantastic i just know it's going to grow and grow and, and uh There'll be a lot of people saying, oh, you know, we so needed this. It's going to be brilliant, yeah. Pete. Fantastic idea. Thanks. Oh, as, so you say, as you say, it's not just drinking drugs, you know, shopping, yeah. chocolate. Yeah, yeah. Drink. Like I said, like I said, uh, negative thinking isn't it can be an addiction. But yeah, it, it, it'll grow and I'm certainly going to be putting some people your way. Appreciate that, Wendy. Thank you. Um, I suppose the, the most incredible miracle that I've witnessed in the last week was I was watching the Denver game when Ericsson collapsed and there was this really chilling picture where they showed his face and he was just dead. He just looked vacant. And then they went back to the studio and you could just see 
everyone being truly present in that moment. But suddenly the world stopped in a sense to witness what they had just seen. And there was this extraordinary sort of beauty, I think, in that moment, in the sense that suppose we felt this person was dead and gone. Um, and I think you were talking, Jackie, about the miracle of waking up, the miracle of being alive. And suddenly this person that had everything, that when he came onto that pitch, the dreams of victory, dreams of Denmark, and suddenly they were, they were gone. It was such a poignant moment. And then I sort of went for a walk to sort of reflect on it and sort of thinking really how these things that happen can just in a sense, change everything. And then it was so depressing because when I came back, obviously he, he'd got better, which was wonderful. It was almost like the moment had gone. They were just going to carry on with the game for almost um, this incredible miracle of someone really being brought back to life from death. It was being forgotten again, and it was about the next game, the next game of football. Life just goes on. And really how rare it is that we pause, that we just stop for a moment to pause. And the word miracle really just comes from, actually the, the origins of the word come from wonder. This is that moment where we pause and just wonder and connect with something. Makes every moment a miracle. If we can just really still ourselves and be present with something or someone or something and just see the innate beauty that there is not only in just, in us, but in everything, that sort of sense of connection. That's beautiful, Andre. I love what you say there, and it caused me to think of um, how, of course, life goes on, and 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 you know we all like you know post COVID we're all still moving about and traveling and and so on. And have we really learned any lessons? But it feels like, like you were touched. People are shifted from that moment and we might we might not see it but if you're shifted then then that's you know the level of consciousness of humanity shifted because if you're if you're shifted from the inside it may not be that you can see it outside but it has been shifted and there'll be more people like Andrew who are reflecting on that moment of connection and that that cause for pausing and and seeing more of miracle in life though you might not hear of them because you get to hear about what carries on rather than 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 that pause it's like when someone close to us passes and we say you know our lives will never be the same again it causes us to think about how grateful we are for life and really see eyes fresh really see life through fresh eyes in those in those initial moments or even weeks sometimes and, and then that becomes our new normal so then life looks looks slightly more jaded but it is our new normal that's all it is is but we've still seen that and we've still felt that and that means that we've connected with that that moment of truth and an essence. That's what it feels like to me anyway. Yeah, I was watching that game that Andrew was just speaking about. <clears throat> we were watching it live and it completely and utterly just stopped us. You know, I mean, you really, really felt it that stillness and that outpouring of emotion. And there's been a few times in my life when I've, I've experienced that. And it just makes me wonder why 
it takes something so profound like that to happen for us to get in touch with those immense powerful feelings of love you know I've seen it far too often that there's an outpouring after someone has passed why don't we show that outpouring while that person is here and live in that feeling and unite in that feeling So yeah, I just wanted to say that. Yeah. It's a reminder, isn't it, that we can. Each time it's like we're being reminded that it's to slow down and, yeah. and be grateful when people are in our lives and celebrate, celebrate them while they're here absolutely yeah and and i think that play was only something like 29 years old wow you know a fit healthy young man he just changed in a second you know how much time do we waste not appreciating that deep love and connectedness and I know we're all human and we all get caught up in life and so do I and I get stressed out and I have my off days. But I do try to remember to bring it back to me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And appreciate the smallest of things. Yeah. And that's all we can do is, is, is be the change, you know, li live it. I think a, a lot of the first generation people say, you know, Sid, Sid didn't say, go, go and teach this. He said, go and live this. Go and live it. Live in love and connection. Yeah. Ourselves. Ourselves. Let, you know, don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Let's do it ourselves because... I know that everybody on here has been touched at some point and seen that the more that you can live it yourself, the more you see it in the world. Yeah. I love what, you, what you're saying there, Lisa. The, the, sort of the thought that, that really sort of comes to mind is I've always found it incredibly curious that we talk about COVID and we talk about coronavirus. The corona is when the sun is basically covered by the moon. And so in a sense, you know, it's that point at which the light is blocked and we just see the corona. Um, I, think it, I think the problem is we, we, we get so lit up by our own egos and our own sense, who we are and what we are and the roles that we play that it's very hard, in a sense, to see what really is out there, because we, we just blind ourselves. But in those moments where something like that happens, or for whatever reason, there is some darkness. You can see things, and it's quite, <clears throat> it's quite miraculous. I mean, what was really extraordinary about that moment for me was my wife was talking, while well, that was gone, my wife was talking to her aunt. And her aunt, um, basically her, her son died when he was 16, my, my wife's cousin. He died of the same, he died of heart failure when he was 16. Wow. And it was almost when she was on the phone, it was just, it felt like, person that you know, once he died nobody really spoke about him before because it was too painful it's almost like when his life died his parents life died and you sort of just wonder what would happen if in a sense we could really feel these things and, and sort of make ourselves more whole 
because you know their life stopped in his life. Um, and it didn't need to be that way. I mean, it was an enormous tragedy. But there is always hope. There is always hope. We can just, in a sense, find what is true within us. It feels like there is, um, you know, there there is a there's life is mysterious. We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. I love what Wendy said to to Pete um, about is that's going to be amazing. I, I I think that we don't know what's going to happen. But whatever happens will be what, whatever happens. It will be right. That will lead to something, and that will lead to something, and and that will lead to something else. And you can't sort of join the dots um, going forward. You can only join the dots when you look back and think, "Oh yeah, if that hadn't happened, then I wouldn't have met that person," and so on. And so there's a whole whole mystery. You know, my 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 husband. Um, lost his daughter when she was 18 and and lo lost his uh, a little baby when she was one day old as well and you know you think well you know why why how's how is that fair um how, how is that right and i think it's that we forget that we're just formless coming into form we're just essence living living for a while and we try and make sense of all of that essence and that life and what it means and so on and I think that we can't understand that mystery so all we can do is live and love the best life we can be of service be present you you're talking and your feeling is deeply present Andrew when you speak and and that deep presence is it's so valuable, you know, to yourself and to other people around you. And of course, you, you, I'm sure that you're not like that all the time because none of us are, you know, we, we get busy and we get, we get ahead of ourselves or, or whatever. Um, but I, like, I'm grateful for, for these moments that we're having that here we are around the world, Canada, Scotland, wherever everybody else is in the world, and, that, and we're sitting here connected and present together and sharing this space together. Yeah, that's, that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And that's celebrating life. And, and each other and and we're, we're you know we're all so different on here and yet we're all here drawn to this connection and this moment together in this celebration so we can honor that and whatever step comes from that is what comes from that I love it when Lorraine speaks because Lorraine often starts a story with, I didn't really want to do this thing. <laughs> I had a lot of thinking about this thing, but then I went and did it. And then this amazing thing happened. <laughs> and I feel like I love that because I think that's what we're all doing. Like, I didn't really want to do this thing. I didn't really want to buy an exercise bike. I didn't really want to go for a run. I didn't really want to take that job. And yet we we moved in the direction that is being shown the path that is being shown to us and we moved in that direction and hey guess what you know we, we found out that we loved working with the animals or somebody gave us a house that <laughs> that, that we that we met three years ago or whatever it is and um i think that's a demonstration like an analogy of how how life is we we plod along thinking i don't know what this is all about and then, but underneath, it's all just happening and, and, and guiding and it's all there and there's no right or wrong. There's no right path or wrong path or perfect path. This just is. To be, to be tasted and, and enjoyed and, and not enjoyed and, 
you know, and who knows where it will go. That's so true, because I think that's the, the major thing about this understanding, really, is you can see your own anxieties. Yeah. And there is, there is a part of you that, that is excited and does want to try new things and see how it goes, to hell with it, kind of, if it goes wrong. But, you know, when you've lived through the lens of anxiety, kind of your whole life and been turning down opportunities it's it's like it's still there but you know that it's just your anxiety yeah yeah it's like the um those old-fashioned you're probably too young but those old-fashioned things with the little the little cards <laughs> it's like that you pop you pop that one in <laughs> and life looks all a bit scary <laughs> and then it and the next one comes like oh yeah <laughs> Well, that's good. I'll do that. <laughs> that's beautiful. You're very, I, I, I love, I love, love, love the way you show up, Lorraine. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Lorraine, that just resonated with me so much for, because for the last few months I've been stalling doing this show, come up with all sorts of excuses. And then I realised basically I've just got to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Uh, get used to that uncomfortable feeling, sharing with everyone, mm. and then just see what happens. So, yeah. Yeah, if you think in life of all the things you're worried about and how many of them actually happen, not not that many. And, you know, I, I've kind of, yeah, I've been going, oh, I don't want to organise another health and wellness show. And I'm doing it anyway, but I'm kind of, pulling in the team as well saying oh I'm going to need to delegate some of this so it's like I'm more confident to communicate what I feel I'm not great at and pulling you know a few people and it's yeah a lot, a lot of people if you if you treat them right they do want to help don't they and get that team spirit going So just ask Pete for whatever, you know, I bet yeah. you Wendy and everyone's going to, we're all going to want it. We're all going to be rooting for you. <laughs> Bless you. Thanks. Well, that's why I reached out to Jason. So I, was, I wanted a co-host, you know, for when I'm late home from work, I don't want the show not going on. So I need, you know, somebody there as well. And I thought, well, I'll just reach out. So we had a meeting on Saturday and it went really, really well. Better than I thought it would. <laughs> so, yeah, so we're aiming for the 18th of August for the launch. So I've got a lot of work to do in the background now. That's so cute for the launch. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Don't I'm blushing now. Oh.